My name is Frank Wick. I was born in Southern Illinois in Carbondale, uh, which is the Southern Illinois University. I was actually born on campus. Um, and essentially grew up uh, without art. I didn't know a lot about art until uh, just previous to college. Um, so my art background um, was relatively limited. It was through images and, and books. Um, and then when I went to the University of Iowa, uh, I sort of got exposure to design and sculpture. I majored in both sculpture and design and wound up getting a, a master's in design and later a, an MFA in sculpture at um, the University of Miami down in Florida. So there were several years of grad school and I sort of hopped around the country a little bit. My previous work typically uh, was a little more, um, I guess, regimented or thought through uh, to the point where like it was kind of getting a little bit um, tedious because I would get to the point where like I had this idea and I was really content with it but then the fabrication part uh, comes around and you're you see what you've already imagined and usually it's not as great I mean you know typically your your vision of things is is better than what it will actually be um, you know you sort of imagine soundtracks and all these great things but in reality, you're, you're stuck with this kind of dead object. And so what I started to find myself doing um, was sort of like an accident, really, but I, I started kind of making these organic things that could evolve over time and couldn't, in some respects, couldn't be figured out or drawn much in advance. I work at a, a, a natural history museum, and one of the things that um, is often used in Creating exhibits, um, at least large scale, is uh, expanding foam or spray foams, foams that you sort of apply to a structure and they kind of grow and develop and oftentimes they're used for like landforms um, and they can be carved away and, and changed. Um, and I was really intrigued by that and it's something that, you know, for years I've sort of found interesting, but it wasn't until maybe three years ago that I'd sort of made this small armature of a head and uh, essentially it was just made out of uh, like tape and paper and then put foam over it and I realized that like there was some control in it, you had sort of a limited amount of control but then the end result kind of felt like you'd lost control of it a little bit. At some point I was just sort of semi bored and I bought some foam and started creating these foundations for it, which are also foam. One of my interests was initially was just making something very light, like physically light, um, but maybe visually it looked really heavy. You know, it kind of had this meteor quality, something that looked like rock or uh, stalactites or something. Um, but it was super light, like several pounds. And so uh, I, I just started a really kind of play with that and then I realized, yeah, of course you can add color and you can change them. A lot of the influence, uh, sort of visual influence, comes from poster art and science fiction cover art for both magazines and books. The things that we have in here right now that I've made are sort of it like an in-between stage. Some of them are kind of heading in a direction and some are just going to be kind of, I don't know, put in the back burner or scrapped. Talking with Frank and meeting in the studio has been positive, uh, mutually rewarding. I, like the other artists, he works on several projects at once. Um, I think he moves back and forth and that kind of uh, movement in his own um, creative production helps him uh, realize and narrow his vision. Through our meeting and talking, there's been several directions in his work, um, all of which are intriguing and they just not certain where they're going right now. And um, that's what he, we, he figures out, I don't figure it out. Shannon and I have, have met several times and um, one of the initial visits, uh, the studio was, was pretty bare. I mean, it was relatively freshly painted and things were sort of uh, being moved in. And so I hadn't really, at that point, I hadn't really started on some of the projects that she and I had originally talked about. Um, and so when she actually came over, I had some, I guess you know, let's call them experiments or 
some of the some of the beginning stages of some of these pieces out and not not really hidden but at the same time I wasn't trying to showcase them or or talk to her too much about them and uh, so she sort of started looking at a couple of them and we started talking about like why I'd made them or what they were and uh, at that point I sort of realized that I was more intrigued by them than I was by the stuff that I'd originally talked about. I think what impacted me was this notion of futility um, and failure and uh, the infinite possibilities of futility. Um, he does so with a sense of irony at some times. Other times um, they're very funny. Um, it could also be dark. I think he has a biting uh, critique occasionally. I mean, I think I'm sort of at the point in my career where, you know, I'm, I mean, I've been doing this for a while, like 20 years. And so, I mean, what's nice for me is to have somebody that, you know, is, is, uh, is well-spoken, who, who knows sort of a, a range of art forms, who I can just sort of interact with and just feel comfortable with. And she's really good that way. And I actually, I actually, I have to give her husband credit too. Like, he's been real supportive and interested. Glenn, um, he's, he's also part of this on, on some small level. He's, he's been supportive as well. 